so it's Sunday night, uh, Sunday evening, it's late. I don't even want to tell you how late it is, because it's late, there's a, there's a clock. Oh, oh well. Um, anyway, so, pardon me for some uh, lack of quality for this, vi this portion of the video. It gets better when uh, Sam starts doing things in the video. First, I want to talk to you about these two words that are used in the uh, lab manual or in the experiment. They don't, good solvent doesn't necessarily mean that's a good choice for you to use. In this context, the word good is used to mean uh, it's a solvent that dissolves your solute too well. And a bad solvent means it's a solvent that does not dissolve your solvent um, at all or definitely not adequately. So for many of you, what you want to do, uh, by the way, it is possible to, to, to do this uh, recrystallization experiment, experiment with just one solvent. But for many of you, you'll want to mix a good solvent and a bad solvent so that the mixture of the, um, the solvents that you're using is going to have a property somewhere between good and bad. Okay. That is because you want to have a solvent or a mixture of solvents that will uh, not completely dissolve or it doesn't or it's actually ideal if it doesn't dissolve your material or your solute at all especially the component of the solute that you're trying to purify it's better if your solvent system doesn't dissolve that that at all at room temperature but when you heat it your solvent or your solvent system or mixture dissolves it perfectly, completely at elevated temperature. Hopefully it's not such a high temperature like 100 degrees or less, right? Because especially you're gonna be using most likely a water bath or hot water bath. Uh, can't, can't get above 100 degrees on that. And then when it cools, you want the solute to come out of the solution and recrystallize out of the solution. That's what you want to happen. Um, so we are going to talk about choosing the correct solvent for the recrystallization. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna explore three different scenarios that you may encounter, and then we're gonna talk about what to do in the case of the scenario. So after you add your crude material in, you get to choose what solvent you wanna dissolve it in. Mm -hmm. so, so here we have two examples. Um, as you can see in the first one, the solid dissolved completely when you added the solvent. So this solvent is too good and we will not be able to use it further. But then as you can see here, the solid is not dissolved. So this solvent may work, but we still have to heat it and check. So when we put it into a sand bath, if it doesn't dissolve, that means there's too much bad solvent in there, which means it's also unusable. You don't have to go. As you can see, for this example, when you heat it, the solid dissolves. And so this is the one we'll further use. Once the solid is dissolved, you want to transfer it into a warm crate tube. And then, and then upon cooling, recrystallization should occur. And you want the cooling to occur slowly to get rid of any impurities. <laughs> as you can see, the crystals are appearing as the solution's getting cooler. <laughs> and then you have to clean the ground glass with a chem wipe and a spatula to make sure the plunger has direct contact. Okay, so to transfer a Craig tube into our centrifuge tube, you're going to pull down on this string so it's nice and tight, then you're going to lift it over, and we're ready to go. You can actually centrifuge your solution. You have to make sure the centrifuge is balanced. So to do that, you're going to weigh your Craig tube.
Actually, you put this in the centrifuge. You want to make sure your balanced tubes are opposite sides of each other. Close the lid. We're going to set our timer. Stop the centrifuge. You hit this break button. Centrifuging, you can see that the liquid's at the bottom of the tube while our crystals are at the top. Once you have your solid uh, crystals that are purified and dried in your Craig's tube uh, via the centrifuge, what you want to do is take a little sample of it in this uh, capillary here. Okay, and you only need just barely anything at all on the tip. You'll dab the open uh, end of it, uh, poke at your crystals with this open end and if you get just any amount at all what you want to do is put the uh, closed end down and then in this large capillary tube you'll drop your small capillary down the large capillary tube and then as it goes down the tube uh, what, what, what's going to happen is um, the, the solid gets packed at the bottom of this tiny capillary tube so you'll just have to drop this the capilla a big capillary tube and it's going to be packed and then you place this on your melting point uh, device and then you watch for this solid to melt uh, you, you're watching for for that visual cue and as you're watching for that you'll always want to ch uh, keep checking your thermometer um, so that you'll know at what temperature the solid began to melt and you will also want to get the temperature at which it finished melting because melting point is usually given as a, a range not just a, one single uh, temperature point if you're wondering why you were you kept hearing a uh, dog noise during this video at least my portion of it it's because my dog is with me here but we're about to go home praise the lord